No final decision has been made by NATO on the subject of troop withdrawal from Afghanistan. The Secretary General, Jens Stoltenberg, has said that the alliance is seeking a lasting and sustainable political agreement in Afghanistan. Stoltenberg briefed the media on the road ahead for both Afghanistan and Iraq. We are faced with uh, many dilemmas, and there are no easy options. At this stage, we have made no final decision on the future of our presence. But as the 1st of May deadline is approaching, NATO allies will continue to closely consult and coordinate in the coming weeks. We remain committed to our rescue support mission, with training and funding for the brave Afghan security forces. NATO strongly supports the peace process, and as part of it, we have significantly reduced uh, the number of our troops. <clears throat> the peace process is the best chance to end years of suffering and violence. Its decision to not pull out comes after numerous threats by the Taliban, who say any delay will mean a return to full-scale fighting. The insurgents have launched a string of offensives, threatening at least two provincial capitals. The Taliban's warning urging the NATO ministers to not seek continuation of occupation and war by staying still stands. The NATO Secretary General has said, a spring offensive will only damage the prospects for peace. He believes that there is still time to reach a political agreement in Afghanistan before the May 1 deadline. The NATO chief added that there will be nearly 10,000 NATO troops in Afghanistan from NATO's European allies, saying that the focus now is to have successful peace talks and to ensure that Afghanistan does not become a safe haven for international terrorism. Meanwhile, the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, reviewed its troop deployment strategy with the Afghan President, Ashraf Ghani, with the top American diplomat reiterating support for the peace process. Blinken told Ghani that the United States is committed to a peace deal that includes a just and durable political settlement and permanent and comprehensive ceasefire. In Iraq, the NATO will be expanding troop presence for its mission to train Iraq's sovereign forces from 500 to 4,000. Stoltenberg says that this was on the request of the Iraq government itself to help fight the remnants of the Islamic State. And for more on these developments, joining us from Washington, D.C. is our correspondent, Simon Marks. Uh, what, to your mind, are the key takeaways uh, from the development so far, Simon? And what do we know about the Biden administration's Afghan policy so far? Well, there's absolutely no question, Molly, that the Biden administration uh, finds itself in a bind uh, that is a predictable bind. They knew it was coming because, of course, uh, Joe Biden's predecessor in the White House there, Donald Trump, uh, planned for the full-scale withdrawal of U.S. troops from Afghanistan, uh, a decision that troubled some Democrat strategists when it was made because they argued that the facts on the ground, even at the time, didn't suggest uh, that the time was apposite for those remaining 2,500 troops to come back. Now, the facts on the ground have worsened. They become less stable, with the Pentagon officially saying just a few days ago that the proposed troop withdrawals uh, are unequal to the task that the United States and its allies face in Afghanistan. But there's an agreement in place. It's supposed to all happen, as you know, uh, by May. And so the Biden administration is now clearly signaling uh, to the Afghan government uh, and also to its NATO allies uh, that it doesn't want to go ahead with that full-scale withdrawal right now. There are uh, options in place uh, to delay the implementation uh, of, the agreement with, of the agreement with the permission of the Afghan government to scrap it entirely and come up with a new uh, set of benchmarks for a later withdrawal of U.S. troops. But it's a complex thicket uh, because, of course, there are uh, forces in Afghanistan that want to see the back of the Americans and are going to push very heavily 
for that to occur on the current timetable. The outcome appears at present to be moving in a direction where some of those U.S. forces will stay on the ground in Afghanistan. Uh, there is support in Congress for that, backing Joe Biden up, because uh, even Republicans on Capitol Hill were dubious about the proposals uh, that the Trump administration forged with the Afghan government uh, when Donald Trump was still uh, in, uh, in residence at the White House. Right now, NATO's decision to not pull out uh, comes after numerous threats by the Taliban. Uh, even the peace talks that have uh, continued so far uh, have taken place in the shadow of violence and uh, numerous attacks by the Taliban. Uh, they also mean that there has been substantial failure on part of the American government to ensure that the Taliban attacks do not continue. Yeah, I, I think it's worth making the point that Zalmay Khalilzad uh, was kept on by the Biden administration in his uh, critical role, as it's viewed by politicians of all sides here in Washington, uh, in trying to oversee uh, this process. He, of course, is the former uh, U.S. ambassador, uh, now very much uh, in charge of those conversations with the Afghan government. Uh, there is no question that there is pressure on Joe Biden from multiple sides here, because uh, were he simply to do nothing and withdraw those U.S. forces, there is evidently the concern that Afghanistan could once again serve as a haven of instability that could lead to fresh attacks against American interests at home and overseas, a regrouping by uh, al-Qaeda and Islamic State perfectly possible there. Uh, but equally, uh, Joe Biden also is under pressure from those uh, voters in the United States that say, look, uh, Donald Trump was absolutely right. It's time to disentangle ourselves from faraway conflicts about which we know uh, nothing. So he's going to be eager, I think, to come up with a solution that isn't just another open-ended commitment to an American troop presence in Afghanistan after 20 years of uh, that already having been uh, notched up by the United States. There is an appetite for an exit strategy, and the Biden administration knows that, but they believe that it's trumped by the concerns uh, of Afghanistan once again becoming a destabilizing presence on the world stage if those U.S. troops simply walk away. Simon Marks, thanks very much for those uh, details and updates as of now. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.